Hello, St. John's friends. I want to share with you a story. A gentleman by the name of Charles. My name is Charles St. Ville, and I'm 29 years old. I was born and raised in a small village in Haiti. I was born in a poor family. Since I was born, many diseases want to end my life. On day one, I was born very sick. My condition prevented me from talking. Everyone thought I would never be able to speak in my life. At seven years old, I became an orphan. In Haiti, there's no foster home or other assistance for a seven-year-old orphan kid like me. I ended up living on the streets. As a young boy, I experienced the challenges of starvation, misery, poverty, and violence. Finally, was able to be at a school for orphans where they fed us children pretty much the same thing every day, but they fed us. After spending more than 10 years, I had the opportunity to leave the country in 2006. I left Haiti with a, a hope of redefining my life in the United States. Life was not easy. I did not know English, but I was blessed to live in a country where I was not starving to death anymore. I heard that if somebody would work hard and study hard in this country, you can get a piece of the American dream. I was eager and hungry to get my piece. I went to school in the mornings and work in the afternoons. The 2010 catastrophic earthquake in Haiti changed my life, made me more aware of Haiti once again. I knew that my education and skills could make a difference. Ten days after my graduation, I was found myself in Haiti working as a water resources engineer, went back to Haiti to help with the recovering effort after the devastating earthquake in 2010. And he came across so many children suffering. And so as he told this story, he also lifted up the understanding that during his schooling time, he actually went to a feeding or a packing session of an organization just like Meals from the Heartland, which I know many of you are aware with, and, of, and hopefully you've participated in that, in a, an, an amazing, wonderful experience. One of the organizations we're supporting with a special offering for hunger over this next week or several weeks, if you are able to participate in that. But he talks about how he went to this packing session in Chicago to help a group of other people packing these food packets that then would go uh, globally around the world to people just like him who were starving and have some kind of a, uh, an organization that is on the ground in that community feeding people. And he said, when I touched or when I first tasted that food, because at the end of the session they offered the volunteers packing an opportunity to actually taste this meal that they were packing. And he said the moment he tasted the sample at the end of the session, he knew these were the meals that he ate as a child. This was the same organization that fed him, keeping him alive, as he now is a civil engineer helping to bring clean water into the lives and communities in Haiti. What we do as God's people makes a difference. That's the point of that story. I want to say thank you for joining us for these Reflection Connections. We're winding down. Uh, we just have one more week to go at the end of July. But thank you for tuning in and listening. I hope there's been some benefit to you. And in this case, I just wanted to share this message because we're talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000 on Sunday and thinking a little bit more, more broadly, about how it relates to God's call to us to fulfill that basic, basic command to feed those who are hungry. When did we do this, Lord? You did it, he said, when you have done it unto the least of these. Bless you. Thank you for your ministry in and through St. John's Lutheran, and I wish you God's peace today. Amen, and thank you for joining me.